What is up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys stopping by. Today we are talking about getting a skirt around your home, especially if it's pure and beam. Um, and a skirt is basically the thing that goes around the lower third usually um, of your house that covers your footings, uh, your piers, stuff like that. Um, but before we dive into it, I would like to say, uh, if you haven't already, um, I would appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel, um, ringing the bell so you get notified when I drop new videos. Uh, we are in the middle of an off the grid build, which is kind of the examples I'm going to be using in this specific video. Um, so if you guys want to follow along with that whole thing, you guys can also, if you haven't, uh, go follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I'm really, really active on those two platforms. So you get the day to day look at my work. Um, but without any more wasted time, let's go ahead and dive into a way, one of the many ways you can install a skirt around a pier and beam home or something of that matter. This would even work for mobile homes or, um, if you have a camper that you want to build something around this, this would potentially work for that as well. Uh, so let's get into it. All right, guys. So first things first, and I'm actually going to drop my screen off here just so you guys can look at the picture for a second. Uh, this is what a janky uh, pier and beam foundation looks like. Now, um, it doesn't mean it's not durable. It doesn't mean it's not sturdy. Uh, it's just not a pretty thing to look at when you're looking at a house. Um, and ignore the two by tens that are cladded onto my beams. Um, those are there for uh, future reasons down the road, which we'll get to in other videos. Uh, but overall, this is what a pier and beam is going to look like without a skirt around it, which means insects, animals, water, all that stuff can actually get in to the under portion of your house, which is not good. Uh, so many people uh, get confused as to how to go about um, covering this up because one, you have moisture, you have dirt. You don't want to put your skirt all the way down to the dirt because that's going to cause problems. You're going to have rot. Um, but a lot of people don't want to dig out a footing around their entire house, pour concrete, put rebar in and build, you know, something crazy. So the way that I do it in this case, um, because this is an off-grid build, I don't really have access to concrete that easily, um, especially not for something this small. So what I actually chose to do is use some uh, cinder blocks, some solid cinder blocks, um, and dig them into the ground a little bit. And I'll show you the picture uh, here. So you can see here, I just basically built a wall. Now this wall is not load-bearing. Those um, cinder blocks across the ground I have no structural integrity. The two by four wall that I built has no structural integrity. It's purely there as backing for my sheathing. And then in the future, I'm actually going to be putting some evolved stone on the uh, skirt of this home. Um, so that's kind of what I'm preparing for here. So what I did is I got, um, I think they're eight by 16 by, uh, I believe it's six inches uh, in, in height, um, center blocks. So I dug them down a little bit into the ground. Um, I don't know if I actually did it on this side. This side might just be sitting there. Um, and then I just laid a bottom plate, which is pressure treated, a two by four. And then I had a top plate attached to my foundation, my two by 10 uh, um, floor joists. Um, and then I just framed a wall basically, framed it as if it was a rake wall. Uh, what I did do here, just kind of side note, is that zip tape that is there. Um, I'll see if I can maybe uh, zoom in a little bit on, on that... Um, I don't think I can. I'm not savvy enough to do that. But um, on the uh, portion where you see that zip tape along the bottom portion of the build, that's actually folded under so that it's basically sealing off behind the sheathing to any insects or anything like that. So no insects are going to be able to crawl up behind the sheathing and get into the envelope of the home. And then I framed that technically top plate on top of that uh, sealed uh, tape job on that um, on that seam. Uh, so basically what I did is I just cut those two by fours. I set them fairly tight against the uh, center block and the top plate so that they do have pressure. But again, it's not structural. It's purely there to hold the sheathing. Uh, the next step is that uh, you're going to want to sheath that with whatever sheathing you're going to be using. Uh, in my case, I was using, as you can see here, uh, some zip system uh, 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 panels. Um, and then I basically just zipped them continually like they were just part of the wall. Um, the reason for the center block is to keep that wood, that bottom plate and that sheathing away from the dirt. Um, and now that I have this done, the next step that's going to take place is, I can't really zoom in here, but um, that cinder block is actually going to get sealed with a, a, a liquid sealer, a, a, a zip liquid flashing from the panel to the concrete. Um, or the concrete cinder blocks. Now that I'm not going to put too much faith in purely because those cinder blocks can shift um, and that would break the seal fairly quickly. 
Uh, but that's just precautions for me just because I think it will give me some bit of durability across the entire um, build. But once I get that sealed with liquid flash, I'm actually going to be putting a, uh, a flashing, a metal flashing strip um, across that. As you can see um, here in this picture here, you can see that there's a metal flash that will be going basically over that, uh, that cinder block that I have there. Um, it'll be about, I don't know, an inch off of the actual dirt ground, but it'll go all the way up onto the zip panel. You can see here, I think they might have zipped this one flat, but mine will actually um, be up against the zip panel and it'll come down on top of the center block and then it'll actually kick down towards the, um, towards the, um, the ground. So it's technically more of a Z flashing. Um, I couldn't find a picture of, of a Z flashing that would make sense in this because they're all like super small, but it would basically be a Z flashing that I would put against the paneling down to the center block and then it'll kick down towards the dirt. This is going to keep water from one getting to that two by uh, four pressure treated as well as going to keep water um, off of that um, um, kick water from out behind uh, the, the wall. So like when the siding goes on top of that Z flashing, that water is going to be kicked out, out and around the bottom plate. Um, I feel like I said that like 17 times in just like a different way. So regardless, this is the best way that I found to do a quick and easy, uh, pier and beam encapsulation for lack of better words, um, to close off that pier and beam. So this gives you ground contact with your cinder blocks. It's fairly cheap. Um, it gives you a bottom plate and it gives you solid 16 inches or 24 inches, whatever you're doing on center backing for your paneling. Um, some people I've seen just go straight to a uh, cement board and they'll attack cement board on there. If you're not worried about uh, the sheathing aspect of it, um, because it isn't structural, you could just put your cement board on there. Um, some people might do like a wire mesh and actually get it prepared for some sort of stone. I wouldn't recommend doing any type of actual stone on a setup like this because you just don't have the bearance on this cinder block that you would need for a heavy stone. So this is more for something that's going to be a lighter uh, siding that isn't going to be pushing that wall down into the dirt. All right, guys, and that pretty much sums it up. Now, there are better ways to do this. If I had you know, if I could do this the way that I would ideally want it, I would actually dig a one foot deep trench or, show, or so um, and put rebar in there and actually, you know, make a form that would kick it up about eight inches off the ground uh, to give me that ledge, but have it be solid concrete. But with an off the grid build, you kind of have to work with what you have without, you know, spending thousands and thousands of dollars just to get a concrete truck out there. Um, and then to get all the rebar and all the different stuff, this was a way for me to get cinder block out there and get it done. Um, so there are better ways to do this. This is just the way that I chose to do it in this circumstance, um, on our main house build, which is going to be a lot bigger build. We're going to be doing this completely different with engineered floor trusses, um, with, uh, uh, just a, a whole different concept. I'm not even going to get into that right now. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to hate on it, that's fine. This is just one way to do it. If you guys uh, thought it helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't, guys, like I said before, uh, I would appreciate you guys subscribing, um, ringing the bell so you get notified when I drop new videos. Um, and that's pretty much it for this video. I hope it helps somebody. Maybe go out there this weekend and do a little DIY. I don't know. Uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. We should have episode... Are we on 11 now? I think maybe episode 11 coming out here in the next week or so. Um, so yeah, anyway, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Much love.